Hey, I'm Rohil and I'm not alright. Swiss Army Man written and directed by Daniel Kwan and Daniel Skinner starring Paul Dano and Daniel Radcliffe is the bizarre story of Hank, a young man stranded without hope on a deserted island on the brink of suicide until he finds and befriends a gassy and oddly charming corpse. A corpse with what seems to be magical powers, a multi-purpose tool guy, as the film refers to him, just perfectly equipped to help Hank escape his stranded state. The film makes a sincere and painfully slash beautifully effective attempt at discussing humans, who we are as people and the social structures we've built up for ourselves, at least as far as a Western world is concerned. The film also dives into more universal topics like life and death, the root of fear, and the lens through which we view ourselves. This is all done through the mechanic of a dead body reanimated, learning to be alive again. Hank, played by Paul Dano, is insecure and shy. He feels he isn't good enough. A running thought throughout the film is that Hank fears he isn't loved by anyone. Paul Dano portrays this with excellent emotional control. He is unhappy, and it's the reason he's run away from home. It's the reason he ended up on the deserted island by himself. He isolated himself. The island and jungle landscapes that Hank is trying to escape from not only threaten his life on a very literal level, but could also hold a lot of meaning on a figurative level as well. The island could be a representation of Hank himself holding himself back. He desperately wants to break free from the feelings of isolation and loneliness he experiences in his life and on the island, but on occasion contemplates staying within the jungle, knowing that on some level he feels safe there. He feels free from any judgment. He is allowed to be weird. This is also seen at the end of the film when Hank runs back into the forest with Manny. We see how familiar he really is with the forest or the jungle, finding his way back to the beach with little difficulty. Manny is played by Daniel Radcliffe, who, by the way, delivered one of the greatest physical performances in recent years. I mean, the control over his expressions and physicality were incredible. Manny serves many purposes far beyond his toolbox of survival equipment. He asks questions. Hank is enabled to make sense of his world by explaining it to Manny. He allows for an on-screen conversation between life and death. Manny learning to be alive again, eating, laughing, falling in love, that's all less about Manny learning to be alive again and more about Hank and the audience learning to appreciate life again. Before Manny, Hank was dead, ready to give up. But with every new feeling Manny is able to understand, a new tool is unlocked in his toolkit allowing for Hank to advance one step further with a new hope. Some examples. An initial conversation with Hank allows for Manny to become kind of a corpse canteen, providing Hank with water. Later, Manny learns about attraction and then unlocks the ability to use his junk as a compass. When Manny learns about confidence, he unlocks the ability to start a fire. This shows the importance of growing, learning, to face your fears. Fear being another running theme throughout the film. Having a literal dead body around 24-7, Hank finds himself fearing death again and seeking life a little more, which is huge considering Hank was on the brink of killing himself. The conversations between Manny and Hank dive into the why of us. Why we are and aren't allowed to behave in certain ways, what is normal and what is weird the personal boundaries we place on one another. With Manny being a character learning things for the first time, or rather relearning a thing, he is free from a filter and real inhibition. This allows for the character to speak and respond honestly to everything. He can openly talk about the feelings Hank and the audience find uncomfortable, forcing both Hank and us to finally deal with them, question them, or accept them. 
While the film is left deliberately ambiguous, there are strong implications that Manny truly is just a corpse, and everything we see him do or hear him say is a mental projection from Hank. Much like Tyler Durden is an id for the narrator in Fight Club, free from the inhibitions he has, Manny is an id for Hank. This is also why flatulence seems to be at the forefront of the film. As silly as it sounds, it's more than just a childish joke. In the film, Hank expresses a discomfort with flatulating around others and prefers to do that by himself or holds it in. This is true for every aspect of Hank. He chooses to isolate himself, chooses to hold in his feelings by not talking about them, and often tells Manny to shut up when things get too real. In contrast, Manny is constantly farting to an absurd degree, and his farting also results in every major action that catapults Hank forward. We also see this in their connected desires. There's a woman named Sarah that Hank feels he isn't good enough for, and the moment Manny sees a photo of her, he ends up falling in love, determined to be with her at all costs. This idea of Manny being an id is also true towards the end of the film, where a reversal takes place. Manny shows Hank everything he has been running away from, and eventually ends up carrying him back to humanity. Hank spent the entire film building Manny up to a point where Manny could finally walk and move again, eventually being strong enough to carry him to the end. Hank was building himself up. In the end, Manny is ultimately rejected and seen as the dead corpse he is by everyone around him. This could be a way of exposing the truth that he is just simply a part of Hank. A part that Hank needed to get him to where he really had to be. After a painfully awkward conflict with the cops, we see all the characters on the beach. Hank lets out his first gassy triumph and Manny springs back to life and propels himself back into the ocean. Here's the ambiguity. Was Manny actually a reanimated corpse with superpowers, or is this a stylistic, filmic choice to have the closing scene be symbolic of Hank no longer needing Manny, having finally accepted himself? We do see a brief moment of acceptance with him and his father through a shared nod. The film is super, super layered and open to a number of different interpretations, as most interesting films are. And this is just simply what I took away from it all. These are my thoughts, and I'd love to hear or read yours too. Feel free to post them in the comment section, or follow me on social media and we can chat there. If you enjoyed this piece, share it with your friends. I make videos like this one every week, at the latest every two weeks, but there will definitely be a new video on this channel consistently. So if you'd like to check out the next one, be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.